Interesting. Um, I guess one final question I'd like to ask you is something that's been fairly controversial recently, especially in New York City, um, with some of the large mixed-use developments. Um, there have been there are a number of uh, high-rise condominiums um, being developed in New York for unbelievable numbers. Um, the development cost is high, but the sales cost is even higher. And there's a term that I'd like to um, uh, uh, tell you that, that I'd love to get your, your feedback on and what you think of. It's called the poor door. And I don't know if you've, you've heard this term as it relates to it. And, and what I'm referring to is a, a uh, development that has market rate. Uh, it's usually for for sale, but it could be also for for rental. Market rate numbers that are sky high. But as part of that development, there's also a um, low income or moderate income component that are being sold at, at lesser prices. And those two, uh, those two uh, different uh, target groups that they're, that they're being marketed towards have, se have, um, have separate entrances. So the moderate or uh, low income housing would have an entrance perhaps here, and the, the market rate uh, entrance for the wealthier uh, buyers or renters of the units would have an entrance over on the other side, for example. So they've been the, the term poor door has been used in this separate, separate, uh, you know, separating of, of the two different either rental renters or, or buyers of the units. What are, what are your thoughts on on this? And you know, there are arguments that say you know that's that's demeaning to those people that shouldn't be. They should be able to enter from the same entrance as everybody else. The developers are saying, gee, you know, we can get a higher number if people are separated, et cetera, et cetera. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's an interesting question, Andrew. 80-20s, um, um, and when I say 80-20s in New York, thousands and thousands of units have been built with uh, New York State and New York City Housing Finance Agency, tax-exempt financing. Uh, I'm talking, the, I'm talking uh, rentals now, high-income mm -hmm. high rentals, uh, with no restrictions on 80 percent of the units and affordable restrictions, usually at 20 percent of area median income for 20 percent of the units. And in addition to um, the tax exempt financing, those properties uh, enjoy some real estate tax benefits over a period of years. So there's a, there's a public argument, which um, is, is probably a pretty good argument, that um, the, the units that are 20 percent uh, in low income ought to have the same conveniences and the same benefits and the same amenities as the 80 percent. Um, and it's it's interesting, this this issue hasn't come up until just a few months ago when one of the, one of the first properties opened on that basis. In other words, for for almost 20 years, 8020s multifamily have been built with without a poor door, with with uh, one common entrance, mm -hmm. typically a doorman entrance. Mm -hmm. And um, the 8020s are all full. The market in New York has been very, very strong, as I'm sure you know. Sure. So it hasn't really been an issue. In fact, um, I live in New York. Um, I understand the market pretty well. And there, there, there are those that say, well, a lot of people in New York don't know their neighbors and really don't care, and, 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 and it's sort of impersonal. Um, and I, I prefer to think of it as people sort of stay to themselves to some degree. So. Um, <laughs> These buildings have been quite successful and they're in quite good areas. Um, it recently became an issue because a developer built a door uh, separate for the 20 percent and the 80 percent. Sure. My guess is public policy and so on um, will ultimately say that that's not a good idea, it's not good public policy, and, and it probably won't be permitted in the future during the review of the plans and so on. There's nothing in the federal legislation, there's nothing now currently in the city legislation that, that would prohibit that. Um, but I, 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 it, it's, it, to me, it just, it's just not good public policy, and I really think that um, given the advantages that uh, the developer would get through the uh, tax exempt financing and the tax abatement, that um, public policy should be served by uh, a common entrance. Interesting. Interesting. It's a very, it's a very interesting uh, subject, and I think that we'll probably hear a lot more about it going forward, and to your point, there'll probably be some some legal challenges to it and so forth, so that it will, we'll follow that with interest. Uh, Gary, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much. Uh, Gary Munson of Whitney Capital Company, thanks very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us at Lindrup Blog.